What's up, Packer fans? Welcome into the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. You can follow the podcast at Pack a Day Podcast. If you missed yesterday's episode, yesterday I went through five players who I would like to buy stock in. If a NFL stock exchange took pl- took place and I could actually buy stock in NFL players, that's what I would do. Now, technically, you could buy football cards and invest that way. So that's another way you could think of this. But yesterday I went through five players that I thought would be good to invest in. So I figured today I would do the opposite. So now I'm going to go through the five players that I would sell stock in if I could at this point. So This doesn't mean, and I want to be very clear here, this doesn't mean that I necessarily think poorly of these players, right? Doesn't even necessarily mean that I think they're on the decline. It just means that they've reached a point where I might get the most on the return on my investment at this point because they're coming off a strong season, some things like that as well. So we'll get into these each on a case by case basis. But let me start by number one. And number one is a perfect example of that. And number one on my selling stock list is Devontae Adams. Now you might be thinking, Andy, what the heck are you talking about? Why would you pop? Now I'm not talking. I want to be very, very clear here. I'm not saying trade Devontae Adams. This is not a who I would like to sell on the Packers. That's not what I mean here. I'm saying I think right now Devontae Adams stock is about as high as it's ever going to be. If you want proof of that, Pro Football Focus just put out their top 50 players list, and the number one wide receiver on that list is Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams is the number one wide receiver in football as we speak. There's no further ceiling for Devontae Adams because what's next? Now, maybe he can work his way into Hall of Fame status. Maybe. That's maybe something he could work his way into, but that, that's probably the peak of what could possibly happen, right? We're never going to talk about Devontae Adams as one of the top five greatest wide receivers of all time. We're never going to talk about anything like being the best wide receiver at football in, in any given season is an insane accomplishment. He has accomplished what very few players ever at the position have accomplished to be the best at their position at any given point in time. And we're starting to approach that Devontae Adams is almost 30 territory. Um, You know, obviously this upcoming year, uh, you know, he's going into a contract season. So you think he's going to have another phenomenal season, but we have seen him battle some injuries from time to time. And again, I want to be insanely clear here. This is not a bashing of Devontae Adams in any way, shape or form. It couldn't be further from the truth. It's just to point out and say, I think this is about as high as you're ever going to be able to sell on Devontae Adams because we all know, you know, it's the flavor of the week sort of thing sometimes, right? Devontae Adams is considered by many the best wide receiver in football right now. Three weeks into the season, it might be Tyreek Hill. It might be Julio Jones. Who knows, right? At that point, you know, DeAndre Hopkins. There's so many players who are close in comparison that, you know, a few good weeks by one of those receivers and Devontae starts off a little bit slower, maybe doesn't have Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. And all of a sudden we see him, you know, maybe what, 50th or, you know, 75th next year in the top 100 countdown instead of being in the top 10 and being the best wide receiver in football. So again, this is not a bashing of Devonta Adams. This is just saying his stock is as high as it can be. It's as high as it's ever going to probably be. And if I were to advise somebody on how what to do with that stock, I would say sell now, sell high while you can. And hopefully you invested at the time when people were saying cut Devonta Adams and everything else like that, because uh, you have certainly held out, bought at the right time, and uh, now are able to sell at probably the highest level possible. Number two on my list is a little bit different. That's Kingsley Kiki. And here's the thing. I think Kingsley Kiki has the ability to be a nice player, but I still think the idea of Kingsley Kiki is better than the player of Kingsley Kiki right now. And I'm not saying he can't take a jump this year. And there's definitely a possibility that he could take that next step and and become more of a disruptive player and become a better run defender and really work his way into a a strong player that's consistently in the rotation. He's in the rotation consistently. I mean, playing 40, 50, 60 snaps per game. But I think there's also an opportunity where it just it it's never greater than what we saw these last couple seasons where it's always okay. Remember, he's what a fifth round pick, I think it was. He, he's a fifth round pick for a reason. There were some flaws in his game, and overall, I think he's been better than that fifth round pick would generally get you. But we haven't necessarily seen anything yet to tell us, all right, he's ready to take that next step and become a breakout player. So 
maybe it's more of a stock that I'm monitoring, but if somebody's willing to pay me good good money for, for Kingsley Kiki stock at this point, I'm more apt to sell. Um, and I, I do, I think the biggest thing here is, as I mentioned just a couple seconds ago, is I feel like the general perception and idea of Kingsley Kiki is better than what he actually puts on the field. So I think there's still room for growth there for Kingsley. I still think he can be a really good football player, but I'm not willing to put my money where my mouth is on it at this point, and I'd rather sell, maybe buy some different stock, maybe buy some TJ Slayton stock instead of Kingsley Kiki and see if maybe that produces a little bit more than what Kingsley Kiki has been able to do through his first two seasons. Number three on my list, very similarly, is Jay Sternberger. Now, what I talked about you know, when I went through the offensive players was you always want to you know, buy low, sell high. Well, this is not a great example of selling high on Jay Sternberger. His stock probably couldn't be much lower than it is right now. And we also know that tight ends are a position that takes a few years to develop. So this could definitely be a mistake on my end, and he could end up being uh, a good tight end or even better than he is now, and you could sell him for more later. But and again, this is all hypothetical stock here, but maybe you could sell him for more later. But I don't know. I just don't see it with Jace since he's coming to the NFL. I hope I'm wrong. I hope he takes the next step. But I think the other thing is there's just a lot of players blocking him on the roster right now too. We know Mercedes is going to be the blocking tight end. We know Tunyon's going to be the number one. Dominique Daphne's in that equation. Josiah DeGuara's in that equation. Uh, I just think that it's going to be difficult for Jay Sternberger to get any sort of consistent snaps. And without doing that, it makes it tough for him to show value. And I still think we're at, you know, two years ago, he was a third round draft pick, you know, wasn't bad his first year, just had some injuries, didn't get on the field a ton. I still think there might be some team, you know, that values him or somebody out there that maybe values him a little bit more. And if so, you know, maybe I see what I can get in that regards. But um, I feel like at this point, I'm ready to sell on Jay Sternberger and uh, again, kind of go in a different direction and see if I can't invest somewhere else. Number four on my list might seem a little bit odd to put him on this list, but it's Ben Braden. And you might be like, Ben Braden, what are you going to get for Ben Braden stock? But I feel like there's a pretty decent buzz about Ben Braden so far this offseason. And obviously Adam Stenovich saying that not only can he compete for a roster spot, but that he's going to compete for a starting spot. There's a, there's a lot of positive energy right there, right now out there for Ben Braden and people wanting to know who he is and what he's about. Can he be a starter? Could he play guard? Could he play tackle? And I think overall, people are people are kind of invested a little bit in Ben Braden. They're excited to see what's going to happen. And for me, that could all go swimmingly well. And maybe he turns out to be a great player. More often than not, when you're an undrafted free agent and you bounce around the league for a couple of years, it's going to take a little bit more than that to prove to me that you're ready to take the next step as a player and that you're going to be a solid foundational piece of a roster. I've seen enough Breno Giacomini's and Alan Barber's who the team's consistently talked well about and said they're coming along and they're developing great. Yash Nijman, sort of a, another one of these. Alex Light was this way for a little bit. I've seen enough of these players come along where they get this hype, they get this buzz, and then you put them in a game and you know what? At the end of the day, they're a late round or undrafted free agent and they just don't have what it takes to play consistently on a down-by-down -down basis. Now, I really liked Ben Braden coming out and I'm bullish on what he may be able to come, you know, become. And I, I, I'm hopeful that he can outperform maybe my current expectations for him. But if there's any sort of way that you can get some return on investment now for Ben Braden, I'm willing to take it. And uh, I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But uh, I just, until I see it, I'm not willing to necessarily believe it. But obviously it's a really nice off season for him so far. And what more do you want to hear from your offensive line coach? So maybe I'd be smart to, to stick with my Ben Braden stock, but um, if I can find a buyer that I could buy at a decent price, I'm going to take my, take my ROI now and see what happens later. And then last but not least on my list of selling stock. And again, I don't want this to come across as controversial in any way. This is not me take, I'm not even considering the entire situation right now, but that's Aaron Rodgers And what I mean by that is he's obviously 38 years old. There's already some questions as to, you know, will, is he going to play this season? Will he retire? He just came off an MVP season. He stayed relatively healthy the last two years. And usually we see some of these injuries start to crop up from time to time. He had the second highest passer rating of his entire career a season ago. And you just wonder, is this something at this stage of his career that he can consistently keep up? Now in this Matt LaFleur system with the weapons they have, I think it is, but 
at this age and with his injury history and those sort of things, coming off an MVP season and playing as well as he did, I'm willing to say, you know what, maybe I could hold on to this stock and maybe it could become a little bit more value valuable, but I think it's about as good as it gets right now. Again, not considering all the off-season situation stuff, similar to a Devontae Adams here. And I'm going to I'm gonna sell high now and figure that even if it goes, his stock goes up a little bit more, it's probably incrementally so. Um, whereas, you know, if he gets injured or has to retire early or things like that, that stock goes down obviously very quickly. So just hedging my bets a little bit here and saying that I'm willing to take the risk and say, I, I think there's more risk that his stock goes down than that, you know, upside that his stock could go that much more up. I think it's about as up as you could get. So I'm selling high on Aaron Rodgers now, again, not taking any of this off season stuff into consideration. Um, I would sell high on Aaron Rodgers, get back, hopefully a chunk of money for that investment and uh, move forward with investments elsewhere. So those are my five that I am selling on. Devonta Adams, Kingsley Kiki, Jay Sternberger, Ben Braden, and Aaron Rodgers. Again, want to be crystal clear. This does not mean that I think that these are poor players or that they can't develop or anything like that. Just what I would do from a stock standpoint if such a thing did exist. One interesting name that you would want to maybe think about here would be David Bakhtiari as well. You know, of course, he's starting to get you know close to that, or either at or close to that 30 years in age. Um, just signed a huge contract, coming off the torn ACL. But man, I just trust David Bakhtiari unequivocally that I th think he's still going to play at a very high level for a long time yet. So not willing to sell on David Bakhtiari yet, but if you wanted to, I would certainly maybe understand it coming off that torn ACL. Hope you enjoyed this uh, episode as always. Uh, if you're not subscribed already, make sure to subscribe. Uh, you can get the audio podcast wherever you get your favorite podcast. You can get the video podcast, um, of course, on YouTube. You can find it also on PackerReport.com. Again, I'm Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Appreciate you guys as always. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.